Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video I guess many of you have been waiting for. A battle between the two giants of the skies, the Airbus A380 and the Boeing 747. And who to better do this video with my brother from another mother and Airbus A380 pilot, Pilot Alexander. Well, thanks Joe for the warm welcome. Great to be here, I can't wait to show you that the Airbus A380 is far much better than your H-Boeing 747. Wow, Alex, you're going right at it, are we? <laughs> she might be old, but she's like a good bottle of wine, which gets better with age mm -hmm. compared to your fancy pantsy Game Boy on steroids. Joseph, I came here to win, not to get insulted by an airplane which was designed in the 60s. The facts will speak for itself, my friend. I am certain of that. So let's get ready to rumble. Let's go to the top. Let's go. To have a fair battle, we're going to have to compare our planes given their specifications like the length, wingspan, etc. And each one of us gets a point if they win that category. Sounds good? Sure, that seems fair. I'll start with the wingspan if you don't mind. Try and beat the 261 feet. Ah, okay, that's your point. The Dash 8 is 25 feet shorter. But let's be honest, due to the longer wingspan, we are both already restricted to land at certain airports or have trouble taxiing around the airport aprons. Yes, that's true, I admit. But I'll beat you in length, 250 feet. Okay, I'll give you that. You fly the longest commercial airline. The Airbus A380 is 12 feet shorter, surely. But what about the passenger capacity? In a standard three-class configuration, we can carry up to 500 and 75 passengers. Well, you know, I don't fly passengers anymore, but if I would, the 747-8 Intercontinental could carry 410 passengers in a three-class configuration. So I'll give you that point. Well, I think I should get a bonus point because in a single-class configuration, the A380 can carry 853 passengers. That's double your amount. Jesus, that's way too many. I wouldn't want to be cramped into that plane. Okay, let's say you had that many passengers on board. How far could you fly them? Depending on loading and weather, the range is about 8,000 nautical miles. Okay, similar to mine, 8,000 nautical miles as well. But I'll beat you in fuel efficiency. My four General Electric engines burn 2.9 liters per passenger for every 100 kilometers. Well, of course, my plane is much bigger and heavier. We burn a little more fuel. Say, Joe, how many fuel tanks do you have? Okay, seven without the two surge tanks and the freighter version has no stabilizer tank, but fueled up to a total capacity of 163 tons. What? <laughs> we have 11 tanks with a maximum capacity of 254 tons. By the way, what did the A320, the last airplane you flew, Joe? Yeah, why do you ask? Because the wingspan of my horizontal stabilizer is 30 meters, which holds a trim tank with a capacity of 18.6 tons. Isn't that the maximum fuel of the plane you are flying and defending against the Dutch pilot girl? Michel, tell me, what do you think about it? Hi guys, uh, yeah, well, thank you for including me in your video. Of course, I think it's very interesting that this video is now going to be Joey who's defending the Boeing. Yeah. Very interesting, um, but uh, Alex, you're flying the A380, and like I said before, it's just a matter of time, so... Come on, Alex, give me a break. Well, Joe, talking about a break, how do you take your lunch breaks? Is it comfortable to eat like this <laughs> on your take log? <laughs> oh man, I knew you were going to use this to score an easy point against me. Okay, there is no way around it. I have to give you that point. I really missed that table. Okay, jokes aside, let's talk thrust. We have more powerful engines than you. Our four engines, Engine Alliance GP7200, produce 70,000 pounds of thrust each. Try and beat that, my friend. That's no problem for my four General Electric Gen X 2B engines. They might produce a little less thrust, 66,500 pounds of thrust each to be exact, but giving it a higher thrust to weight ratio to compare to yours. Speaking of weight, what is your maximum takeoff weight? 573 tons. 
God damn, I'm impressed. Mine is 125 <laughs> tons less. That's nearly a fully loaded 757-200 you are carrying around with you. Yes, that's true. And we need 22 tires and 16 brakes to evenly distribute that weight onto the runway. And we obviously have body gear steering to get around the taxiways. Oh man, I'm giving away <laughs> points here. It's just not true. I have four tires less, but 16 brakes, and obviously we have body gear steering. But I'm pretty sure your maximum payload is less than my 134 tons, right? Yes, Joe. I must admit, that's your point. The A380 can only carry 84 tons of paying passengers and cargo. But you would lose that point if you would fly the 747 Intercontinental. Good that you mentioned the Intercontinental. So you see that my plane comes in two versions, a freighter and a commercial model. Because my name buddy and godfather of the 747, Joe Sutter, built it in a way that it can be used for both purposes. And as far as I know, the engineers of Airbus dropped the A380 freighter project pretty early on in the program. And I haven't seen any presidents flying around in an A380 so I'm not surprised that the 747 is their first choice. Well, you must review your information because this is not true. <laughs> and you know that passengers rather fly the A380 as the cabin is wider and more comfortable than the 747. Also, the A380 is well known for having the quietest cabin in the world and the most luxurious interior. Well, it's easy for you to say you fly for a great airline. Uh, you mean the best airline. Well, I fly for the best car company in the world, so I guess that's a point for both of us. Yeah, okay. And Joe, I want to ask you, how is it to fly for a cargo company? You must feel pretty cold in the cockpit, because the only heat you can get comes from lithium batteries you transport. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's very funny. But I can depart without worrying about 22 cabin crew members in the back of the plane. 25 cabin crew members, you mean? including my colleagues in charge of the lounge during the flight. The, the lounge? Why, don't you have a lounge? No, I don't have a lounge. I'm more concentrated on flying for that matter. What has that got to do with flying? <laughs> but I guess that's one of the reasons why airlines rather buy the 747 as it needs less cabin crew members ranging from 16 to 20 depending on the airline. So from an operational standpoint, it's cheaper. And speaking about cheap, what are the costs of a basic A380? About 445 million US dollar. I'm guessing yours is a lot cheaper, isn't it? Yes, it is. The freighter and passenger version are 40 million dollars cheaper. Definitely reason enough to go for the reliable Boeing. Also, the maintenance and operating costs are a lot cheaper than your modern A380. What a cheap aircraft. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, but I have to say it. And actually, that's a point for me you've mentioned right there. Yes, the A380 is more modern than your 747. But for example, tell me, how do you fly a TCAS resolution advisory? Well, I disconnect the autopilot and then just follow the order to climb or descend. Why do you ask? Because I just read out on my FMA, TCAS Blue. I lean back and monitor the aircraft automatically performing the maneuver and returning back to its initial flight path. Okay, I admit that is really impressive. Impressed, Joe? Let me tell you about the brake to vacate function then. Tell me about it, I'm interested. Well, before descending, I go to destination airport via the plan mode on my EFISPAN and choose the runway on which we are going to land. The system will give two stop lines based on weather prediction, the wet line and the dry line. We select an exit and the aircraft will automatically apply the necessary brake pressure to slow down the aircraft to 10 knots, 65 meters, prior to reaching the chosen runway exit. Great for passenger comfort, isn't it, Joe? But you don't know about passenger comfort, Joe, because you don't have passengers. Where are you, Joe? I got more of these modern features. For example, the row and rope, the OIS, the OIT, the weather radar. And let's talk about something basic. Tell me. Do you have a cockpit window? Because I've got one. I don't have to. I have a massive nose cargo door. And thanks for mentioning all the great features of your modern airplane. You're welcome. I have to admit you got a lot of points on that. But don't forget the 747 is and always will be the queen of the skies. Well, I give you a point for having a great name and blue eyes. But that's all you have. She's not only got a great name, she's been an icon and a leading example for half a century. Revolutionized the modern jet era in the 70s until today, 
And if I see a 747 in the air, it's like Cinderella. And then A380 is like meeting her ugly stepsister. <laughs> well, Joe, <laughs> that's your opinion. I don't agree at all. But what do you guys think about it? Please comment below. Whilst preparing for this video, we both agreed upon that these two aircrafts can't really be compared to each other. The A380 is the only passenger aircraft categorized as super, whereas the 747 is just a little heavy. <laughs> That's true, they are two different from each other, both are leaders in their own category. The 747 is the leading cargo aircraft and has been in the passenger aviation industry as well. And besides Concorde, probably the most recognizable airplane too. The A380 is the more modern jet airliner, as she is nearly 35 years younger than your queen. The efforts Airbus has put into this program to get her into the air are outstanding. Flying-wise, I'm always impressed by the minor inputs I make on the side stick, which moves 570 tons ever so smoothly. I consider myself very lucky to be flying such a tremendous engineering masterpiece for such an amazing airline. I agree with you on that. I'm happy to have seen both worlds coming from the Airbus 8020 and now flying the Boeing 747 was a massive change. Sure, there are a few things I missed from the Airbus side. A lot, I think. <laughs> but I have to say the feeling you get from holding onto the yoke, feeling the force feedback as if you were flying a little Cessna is one of a kind. So I feel very honored and privileged to be flying such an iconic plane for an amazing airline which is taking me around the world and back. But sadly, in a few years, my company most likely will be the one who will fly and retire the last 747, okay, besides the Air Force One. So it will be interesting to see what the future brings. That's true, Joe. We have to sadly admit that the era of the four-engine jet airliners is gradually coming to an end. So let's agree on that. There is no real winner here. Even so, I think I won. But both airplanes are outstanding in their class. And if any of you guys ever get the chance to fly either of them, especially the A380, approach them with respect and feel honored to flying such an iconic plane. We want to thank you guys for your time and we hope we've enlightened you a little about this ongoing competition between Airbus and Boeing. Please make sure to check out my Habibi's YouTube and Instagram <laughs> account at Padded Alexander. And to become our wingman, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming videos. And don't forget, a, a good pilot is, is always learning. <laughs>